Hi, I'm Indy Nidell, and this is another exciting episode of our Great War special, Out of the Trenches, where I sit here in the Chair of Wisdom and answer all of your questions about the First World War. Okay, Nintendo Shy Guy writes, which Latin American countries were the most concerned with this war? Um, well, I wish this was a little more specific, but in general, uh, Mexican oil was really important for the British Navy, though Mexico was neutral, and the Zimmerman telegram was a big deal, but to be a jerk, I'm not gonna actually say what that was right now, and you can look up the Zimmerman telegram yourself. Uh, Nicaragua was occupied by the U.S. in 1912, and shortly before the war ended, officially declared war on Germany. Let me see. Um, the Panama Canal opened two weeks after the war started, and though anyone could use it officially, the blockade meant that only the Allies did. And when the U.S. joined the war, Panama did sever diplomatic ties with Germany. Uh, El Salvador was neutral. Guatemala had a lot of reasons to join the U.S. against Germany, actually, which it did at the end of the war. See, German money had built up and dominated the Guatemalan coffee industry, and dictator and military strongman Estrada Cabrera had a big problem with that since he was, you know, a dictator. And all that foreign influence wasn't helping him out. Um, Honduras was actually the last country to declare war on Germany, doing so in mid-1918. Thing is, while Honduran President Bertrand was pro-U.S., there was a strong German community there, and they obviously were not pro-U.S., so he was actually overthrown with that community's help a year later. Um, Costa Rica joined the war against Germany and interned German citizens. Uh, Cuba did the same, although they also interned Austrian citizens. Am I missing someone? Well, whatever. That's Central America. We can do South America another time. Uh, Andy Martin writes, what happened to all the prisoners taken? What were the logistics involved in the taking of 5,000 prisoners of war in a single day? Okay, well this is way too complicated to cover in just a few sentences, but I happen to know there's a really good online resource for this, and you can find that link in the comments below, which we're going to put there, right? I'll give it to you. Okay, cool. We will very definitely do a special episode on POWs, though. Um, Aryan Visser writes, Dear Indy, first my compliments for you and your team to tell us about this war and its impact on the world. I know my country was neutral during the Great War, but here I read or heard about things in the Netherlands for a few months. I noticed that it was a hard time for the Dutch people to be neutral in a strategic place between Germany and the United Kingdom. Could you give me some more detail about the effects of the Great War in the Netherlands? Also, I want to know why this strategic small country remained neutral during the war. Yeah, it was tough for them. The British blockade really affected imports, Dutch imports, and the Dutch government was actually uh, eventually forced to ration food. Now, the Germans had no need to invade Holland at the beginning of the war, since their battle plan, the Schlieffen plan, called only for passing through Belgium. This, of course, meant loads of Belgian refugees heading for the Netherlands, which further strained food supplies in the long run. But because of the blockade and the Allied attempts to restrict Dutch trade with Germany, as well as cultural ties, there was a lot of sympathy for Germany. Hang on, spoiler alert, okay? So turn it off if you don't want any spoilers. It was the Dutch that eventually offered the Kaiser asylum and refused to hand him over to the Allies after the war. And there was a lot of post-war Dutch support for Austrian and German charities. But there was, well, there wasn't any reason to join the war. If they joined the British, Germany would invade them in the same manner as they invaded Belgium. And if they joined the Germans, the British Navy would just pound the crap out of Amsterdam and Rotterdam. And all that either of those things would produce would be Dutch corpses. John Tron, oh, no, he comments on all our stuff. John Tron writes, you guys should do a video showing all the people that work on the show because each one of them deserves to be thanked individually. This show is top notch. And more from our editor, Florian. Uh, this is the same question from Reddit, but a bit funnier. Maybe you want to take that one. Just a weird quick question, but who are you guys? Professors or just World War I buffs who wanted to share your knowledge? Am I going to end up in a cult if I watch this? 
You will indeed end up in a cult, my child, and you shall live communally in great poverty, and yet I shall have 50 Rolls Royces for some bizarre reason, and there will be loads of sex. But seriously though, I, me, am a historian by education and an actor by career, and the other guys who work on the show are guys who like to make videos. Um, look how handsome they are! Hi guys, my name is Flo, and I'm the community manager from the Great War YouTube channel. Hi, my name is Boyan and I'm the sound guy. Hi, I'm David. I'm the director and producer of the show The Great War. Hey, and I'm Tony, the editor of The Great War. And now, back to you, Indy. Stephen P. writes, Wow, you cover many topics. How about the food? Was a standard Russian given and did starvation play any role in World War I? Although, actually, uh, we did talk about rations in the trenches in a special episode about trench warfare. You can check out that episode right here. And you should definitely not forget to subscribe to see The Great War each and every week. And also, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. I'll see you Thursday for our regular episode.